You're watching the Metaphysical Mentor Podcast with Michael Philpott. Recording. Hello, Lisa. How are you? Good. How are you tonight? I'm doing really fantastic. And I have to give a little bit of shout out to Don, Don of Astrology there for connecting us. And I had a big question. It was like, how did you two connect? So um, we connected on Facebook, uh, which is uh, the ultimate connector. And uh, she did a reading for me and I did a healing for her. We exchanged services. And um, after I got my reading with her, um, I refer all my clients to her. She's just extraordinary. She does a great job. She's very thorough. Um, so she's my go-to. Yeah, I am actually the same thing. Once I had her on interviewed, uh, and then once uh, she gave me the reading too as well, it was like I sent everybody. It's like you got to get your light, you got to get you got to get your chart done. Like it's so in depth, and she's just so lovely too. Her energy just comes across, which is so nice too as well. Absolutely. Yeah, and likewise with you too as well. And that's why probably why so many people are gravitated to you because of just your energy. And you must be it must be all that meditating that you do. It, it is all the meditating I do. Certainly, we're all energy. We're all one. And, um, you know, 99.9% um, .9 of my healings are done on Zoom or on FaceTime with, with clients all over the country. So, um, and truly very blessed that I'm the vessel uh, for the creator to do these healings. Um, so much gratitude every single day uh, because I love my work uh, so much uh, and uh, just really enjoy it. Yeah, you know, I really believe in gratitude. I think it's a, sometimes it's missed a lot. And you know, we don't realize, you know, how to be thankful for so many things, usually because we're on the opposite end of it. We're thinking like, I don't have enough. I'm kind of feeling lack. And but then you just don't realize the small little things you can be grateful for on a daily basis could be so impactful. Absolutely. That's one of the things that I work with my clients on is um, I send them suggestions to work on after they have an hour session with me. And one of the things that is always on that list, Michael, is starting your gratitude practice. Every morning when you wake up, think of three things that you're grateful for. Journal them. Say them out loud to put some vibration to them. And then when I put my head on the pillow at night, I do this again for things that I'm grateful for that day. Um, gratitude throughout the day for the little things that might be happening. This expands everything in your life. It's a very powerful practice. So let's just kind of repeat that again, because I really like that idea. So it, it, what's the thing? It expands everything. It expands everything in your life. So it takes you out of the lack mentality. So we talk about positive affirmations. Louise Hay um, was really big on it. Uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer as well. And gratitude falls into that category of just being grateful and expanding and sending that vibration of gratitude out in the universe. And when we send that out, the universe is going to reward us with some beautiful, beautiful things, right? When we send lack out, guess what you're going to get back? You're going to get lack back. When you miss something, you're going to get more of missing things. So we have to be very mindful of our words and thoughts because they expand everything in our life. Yeah, that's so true. And I'm glad you mentioned this because I, I've been like in the, my little bit of a lack mode lately and I can, I see myself doing it and sometimes I forget I, and I have to catch myself and I really appreciate the reminder to get into that gratitude state. Cause it's like, that's something I've been, I've been negating right now lately. Yeah, just my head's been just whirlwind of stuff going on, but I appreciate that too. So how did you get started and, you know, doing this work because you're coming from a background uh, in education, well, not education, but you were a behavioral psychologist, weren't you? I, I, yes, indeed. That's, I graduated uh, with a behavioral degree from Mount Holyoke College and worked with psychiatric patients for many years, uh, autistic, as well as uh, traumatically brain injured. So, um, you know, what happened back in 2013 is um, I had a life event. Um, my partner of 10 years left me. And um, I stepped into my new journey. I looked at my life and I said, 
okay, where am I going? And I kept asking the universe for a teacher and she surely showed up. I began studying A Course in Miracles. I began meditating. I began journaling and doing many of the things that I, I uh, recommend to my clients today. And meditation transformed my life. Um, when I asked my ten, twin brother, um, what was I like then and what was what am I like today? And he says, you are not the same person that you were back in 2013. Wow. That really, you know, for a person on their journey, it wasn't that it's not that long. It isn't, but I dug in, you know, I decided and I was that I was going to do this work. So I was very disciplined with everything that I did. Um, some people will start it and then they don't finish. I stuck with it. And as I stuck with it, my gifts began to show up um, and I began to do readings. And uh, then um, late 2018, 2019, I opened my practice and here I am today. Wow. I love that story. I, I well, it's so amazing because I, I, so many people have similar stories They're I mean, they're unique in their own, their story, but in general, it's always like a, a life-changing event that stirs the pot that gets things going. It says, okay, why am I here? What am I doing? Okay. Right now my life sucks. I got to go change it. And you dug in because most people, you know, it usually takes a little bit longer for me. It's been taking a long time. I, I was out and I was in and I was out and I was in and the universe just kept forcing me to go back into it. And it's like, oh God, this is getting exhausting. So I just said, you know, screw it. Let's just go at it hundred percent, dig deep, forget all the bullshit and just go right at it. And uh, yeah, it's really, really interesting. So let's talk about the uh, Course in Miracles because that has come up. That was earlier in my years when I first got into the spirituality. That was one of the things that kind of came up was the Course in Miracles. And I've had other people that I've read talk about the Course in Miracles. Mm -hmm. For a lot of people who are listening to this podcast, maybe just kind of touch on what the Course in Miracles is. Well, it was channeled by two professors from the University of Columbia and over a seven year period. And basically, just to really break it down simply, you read a lesson, you read a section, and then you do a lesson every day. Um, so, um, and you practice that lesson throughout the day, repeating it to, you know, to integrate it. Um, it's not for everybody. It's, it's pretty hard work and you have to find a teacher that really knows how to interpret it. And I had a great teacher who had been doing the interpretation of A Course in Miracles for 25 years. Wow. So yeah, that makes a huge difference who you're working with. So that for me was really important in my work. Yeah. Like, I mean, I've, I've, I bought the book and uh, I was kind of reading it, but I was just like, I don't get this. I don't get this at all. But I've just, everybody just kept referring back. Cause I even think, I think Wayne Dyer talked about it back in his days and a few other of the, the, uh, I like to call them the OGs of spirituality. They were talking about that and, but you're right. You really have to find somebody who can translate it and make it meaningful. And, uh, but the good thing is about it. I mean, you're a byproduct of it. So even though you don't have to really go at it, you just have to go to see you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I, I think if I were to sum up what a course taught me, it was the unraveling of fear. Oh, wow. I like the that. Unraveling one. of fear. So when we talk about how we move through our life, anything we're fearful of, we're going to be holding those blockages in the chakras. We're going to be holding it emotionally. And then because we're holding it in the body, it's going to start showing up in the body. So again, Louise Hay had her uh, things as far as different things showing up in the body when it shows up in the knees. We know we're not moving forward with ease and grace on our journey. So this is, this is the important of it. It's releasing of this fear, getting into a place of inner peace with your meditation, getting out of all the clutter in your head, grounding yourself and staying with the breath. Yeah, that's, that's, it's so true. And it's a funny thing you talk about the breath, because I always used to laugh at people and say, oh, just breathe, just breathe. Like we, we breathe, but we don't breathe. Right. Which is so weird. Like, I mean, uh, like to take a deep breath while I am breathing, you know, and somehow 
the amazing physiological effects of that, that deep breath and just sitting yourself back down and settling your best, uh, settling yourself back down makes a huge difference on that. So from, I just want to get curious, like how from your behavioral psychologist background, and now you're working, doing readings and psychology, how do you balance the two? Because it's kind of like, I mean, they're kind of parallel worlds in some way, but some ways they're not. Mm -hmm. So how did you kind of like, you know, how did you kind of figure out like, okay, am I going crazy or, or am I just opening up more spiritually? how did you balance those two things? That, that's a great question. So, you know, the behavioral part of things really helps me because I do so much spiritual mentoring and life coaching. So that part of it really helps me walk through what I, I need to do with someone. The, the less structured part of it is, is the intuitive part, the psychic part, and, and getting inside the person and, and seeing what's going on and, and what, what we need to do to help them smooth out their journey, to help them find their inner peace, to help them reduce stress, depression, anxiety, um, be more healthy, because this is a mind, body, and spirit practice when you meditate. Um, and it's creating that committed practice every single day, starting with five minutes. I blew up the meditation world because everybody thinks that you need to do 30 minutes or an hour of meditation. I say five minutes and then expand it from there. Okay. And that way you're going to be more successful when you start at that point. Okay. So you're basically saying start small and work your way up. Exactly. Yeah. Cause I think most people can take five minutes and just get still. Cause I always wondered, cause you must hear that a lot. I can't meditate. Why do I got to meditate? What's the purpose of meditation? Uh, I get so bored. I get so fidgety. I can't sit still. You must get that all the time. All the time. I get all my clients come to me, even the groups here in Gulfport say, I can't meditate. And yet I take people into a 40 minute meditation with no problem. And they report feeling lighter and feeling so much better, more clarity after the meditation. So it's really finding the right meditation. And I always recommend to people start with a guided meditation because we've got that monkey mind going on, all of that ping pong mind going on. So you want to have something guide you through it. And that's how I started was with guided. And now I do silent ones. Sometimes I mix them up. Yeah. Now, how often do you balance the two between going, you know, um, you know, silent meditation and then basically going guided meditation, and then just, you know, with music now is silent meditation is with music or it was without music. So I do silent meditations. Then sometimes I'll do it with 432 Hertz music or 528, the love frequencies, or sometimes I'll do some guided ones just because I want to hear other people's techniques. And what I find when I do that, then spirit shows me a technique to blend into what I might have just learned on that meditation. So um, that's how I get my guidance to try some different things with people. Yeah, it's always amazing how spirit will guide you. They'll give you a little download before you're like, you know, hey, why don't you try this? Mm -hmm. And it's always amazing what happens. And it's just like, wow, I can't believe that just happened. Absolutely. No, I'm always and you know, when I take people into meditations, it's always going to be a different experience and where I take them. Spirit shows me where to go with them. I have one client, they showed me the, to meet with the mother who had crossed over. So I took her into a space where she could meet with her mother. And she got a message from her mother that had wow. passed away. That's yeah. so she, profound. I love yeah. that. And it's amazing too. Do you find there's a big difference between group meditation and then just individual one-on-one -on -one meditation? Yeah, there is. There's a really, you know, I was doing groups for a while and there is a big difference because you're not getting that one-on-one -on -one experience. Um, it's more personal and it allows me to just focus on you. I can do a group and still have a very good effect because I've done them here in Gulfport, but the experience, uh, I had one of my uh, people People in one of my groups saying uh, I had had a big group and then um, he showed up at the at the group one day and he was the only one and he got the private experience and he said wow big difference yeah now what about group entrainment too as well because I know a lot of people talk about in groups 
setting. Like they'll always have a balance of energies because some people will be a little bit more advanced, a little bit easier to get into that meditative state. Mm -hmm. But then they talk about the vibration in general with the group where we're always kind of balancing to the lowest common denominator because we're bringing the one person who is not at their highest level and we're bringing them up to everybody to balance to get that coordinated effect from the group. Now, do you find that too as well that happens in your in your meditation? Well, what I do is I've got a, a way I begin the meditation in just allowing everyone in the group to settle in. Okay. And it's just getting into the breath and the rising and the falling of the belly and the in and out of the breath. And then allowing them to start noticing their body and then taking them through their body parts and relaxing them. So this allows everybody to get into a really mellow space before we go into the actual meditation, because it's all about the breath. It's not about emptying your mind. It's saying, okay, I got busy thinking about something again. Let's return the focus to the rising and the falling of the belly and the in and out of the breath. Now, just, just to let you know, you're going to put me to sleep because you're going to put me in a trance mode here because the way you're talking, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it's got to get me so relaxed. I got to do a podcast here because if that's the case of what you're doing with your clients, right, you know, people who are listening, definitely got to check out uh, Lisa's uh, uh, information when we uh, have the podcast description on the back of the end of the podcast. But yeah, that's, I could just definitely understand the power of that. Now let's talk if you can, maybe can talk about the physiological effects of that, because we're always looking for, you know, some type of benefit from, it. you know, like people are going, why should I meditate? I know it reduces stress, but what is actually happening within the body? Well, we know it's affecting cortisol and adrenaline and all these different levels in the body. We know ultimately it's changing the brain waves and where you're going and settling it down and moving from an alpha to a theta state. So, it, it's changing physiologically. It's getting you to settle down. That's why some studies show that it can reduce blood pressure. It can reduce cholesterol. There's many medical benefits. Um, and, you know, UCLA has done some studies on the brain changes and memory changes. Um, so there's, there's studies out there that really show that there's actual physical changes with a committed, uh, consistent meditation practice. Yeah. Now you've mentioned about brain waves from uh, alpha to theta. So for people who are listening to this, they may be going, okay, what is your talk about alpha to theta? Maybe just kind of touch on that a bit. Well, you know, I, I don't dig in too much on that, but I mean, it's just a basic change of, of the, the, the alpha is our awakened state. This, this is a very basic interpretation and the theta gets us more into that state where we can get into a different um, realm and allow ourselves to go in a different consciousness um, and go explore a deeper level. Okay. So one of the things I've had happen, I know myself, is we get the release of memories, of stored memories during my meditation. Do you have people that have profound releases of uh, memories that come up through a meditation that they've kind of been stored in their body? Yeah, absolutely. So the idea is what I first do, just so you kind of walk you through what I do, I take people up in a hot air balloon, which is my signature um, hot air balloon ride, which raises your vibration by taking you up. You either want to climb stairs or climb a little mountain or go up in some way to raise your vibration. I take you to an oasis and then I cleanse you with water to purify you. Then I clear out each of the chakras, the seven energetic centers, right? Then we meet with your higher self, the unconditionally loving part of yourself and get a message from him or her. Then we go to the door of forgiveness. This is where we release a lot. Forgiveness will shackle you down in your life unlike anything else. Okay. Because when you don't forgive, it weighs you down, not the other person. So we go to the door of forgiveness and we invite three to five people in. And then we bring in Michael, the archangel to cut the cords and pull the power cords out and send them with love and light. 
and then we go to the door of memories to work through some other things in that door and we never know it's going to show up there a lot of times i take clients in to find a joyful moment in their childhood or in their life that they can take with them once they leave the meditation Mm, I like that. That sounds good. Now you talk about uh, cutting cords. Now, I never really talked about this in the uh, in the podcast itself. I mean, we touched on it in a, an earlier podcast, but let's kind of just explain what you mean by cutting the cords. So, you know, we have these energetic cords that are attached to people. They might um, that um, we are holding on to, for example, when we don't forgive someone, uh, an ex, uh, a family member that, that has done something to us. And when we have these energetic cords, they, they hold us in this place of unforgiveness, for example. And when we keep those attached and we don't detach those and we don't cut them every single day until they don't show up anymore, again, it holds us back in our journey. Um, I had to do a lot of forgiving um, with my parents um, and with an older brother. So um, I had to keep cutting those cords until when I invited three to five people into the door of forgiveness, nobody showed up anymore. Wow. I like that. You know, it's such a powerful thing, forgiveness. Yeah. And it's, it's probably the hardest, but the you know, the, the, probably the best thing that you can do for yourself is to learn how to forgive yes. and just let go. But it's so hard. It's really, really hard. It is um, because we're angry and there's so many emotions behind that. But the release when you do, and for me, it, it just made an enormous difference. That, that's, that was a lot part of my work in addition to A Course in Miracles was this forgiveness work. And once I forgave, I was really able to move forward in my journey. And then spirit and the creator bring you what, what you're supposed to be doing. And they bring you the beautiful things in your life. Now you're able to manifest because you've released all of those things that don't serve your high highest and best good. Yeah. And that's, I mean, it, you know, when you listen to this and it's like, you know, for all those people who are listening right now, it seems so easy when you're listening to that. I mean, it's, but it's so profound. That's the kind of the amazing thing when you do your work. And I always, and I always talk about this on the podcast is doing your work. And this is part about doing your work. Yeah. The simplest things can be the most profound things, but the most difficult things at the same time, but it's so bloody profound. Like once that whole release of energy, because now you have that, all that energy that you've been clinging onto is now released out and you no longer carry it. You no longer physically carry it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I have clients actually report a client I just worked with the other day um, in from California. And she said, I could feel a tugging when you cleared out my throat chakra. And I, I get that often where we're really, I'm really cleansing out and clearing out the chakra energetically. And for her, it's about speaking her truth, being mm -hmm. authentic, walking in her truth. Yeah. And it's so that I find a lot of people right now are struggling with that. It took me a long time to really start. To, I, even today, I struggle a little bit to tell people like, I'm now a psychic medium. This is what I do. I'm not the same Michael Philpot that you knew. And I was always feel like I was feeling uh, fake and, you know, betraying my true identity, who I was. And it took me a long time and it's still, I'm still a little bit, I'm a little hesitant. To, I don't tell everybody, but for the most people, my community and my people I talk to all the time, it's, they all know what I do. I think mm -hmm. I'm a little crazy, a little bit out there, but for the most part, I love it. So yeah, it's, it's, it can be so liberating too, once you have that kind of release out of that throat chakra. Absolutely. Or any of the chakras that I'll feel as I'm clearing them out um, individually. Um, yeah, it, it, it's amazing. And this is why I, I get that report from all my clients that they feel so much lighter and so much at ease because by unblocking those chakras and doing that practice every day, once you learn meditation and whatnot, and you learn to clear your own chakras, then, then you're walking through your day with more clarity with, and, and just, you know, not holding anything in the body. Yeah. Now, just talking about chakras in general, maybe can we just touch on, I know for a lot of people who are listening to this, you probably understand chakras, but then there's the people who are just new to the whole metaphysical world and stuff like that, new to the podcast. They're just kind of curious about chakras. Maybe just kind of go through the, the, the various chakras and maybe some of the things that get kind of get stuck in those sure. particular chakras. 
Sure. Well, the root chakra is our grounding chakra. That's at the base of the spine. It's the color red. And a lot of fear is held here. Um, grounding, safety, uh, financial concerns. So we that's what we want to release out of that. That's the grounding one, ultimately. So if you're feeling like you're spinning and you're scattered and distracted and whatnot, you're likely not grounded. So the root chakra is the one responsible for that energetically. And a lot of times uh, what I do in the meditation is I bring roots up from Mother Earth and underneath the feet and wrap it around the legs and attach it to the root chakra. And then Mother Earth gently pulls you down, grounding you, loving you, knowing you are so safe, so protected, and so loved. Yeah, wow. I like that one. I'm going to write that one down. I have to visualize that when I do my meditation to, tonight before I go to bed. Now we have the ground. Okay. So what's the next one? We have the uh, root. We have, this, this, we have the root. Then we have the sacral, which is just hmm. above it. Uh, it's orange. This is where emotions and sensuality and sexuality are ha held and creativity. So um, this is a space of, of, again, creativity and emotions, a lot of emotions held here. So again, just want to, I'll clear that out knowing that you can, and I always put positive affirmations after I clear people's chakras. So, you know, I am creating everything I want to manifest in my life. I am creating what my deepest desires are. So that's usually what I'll put behind that chakra. Wow. Okay. So we go from the root, the sacral, the next one to the solar plexus just above the belly button it's yellow and this is the place where we take our power back so many of us who are empaths psychics mediums or intuitives give our power away to people and so many times we have to step back into our power okay so let's talk about just for that for a second what do you mean by giving our power away maybe just give us an example of that when you give your power away, it's um, basically allowing people to control you, manipulate you. That's what I think about when I give my power up, taking advantage of you. So that's, to me, what giving your power away. So when you take your power back, you're, you're standing in your power and you're saying, this is what's good for me. And I'm going to stand in this and stand in this truth and know that this is best for my highest and best good. And I'm not going to compromise anymore. Yeah, I know that was one of the things I struggled with uh, is, is just developing that power. And I, you're so true on that. So many of us who are psychic so I tend to have that because, you know, we tend to be people pleasers. We're always helpers. And we don't realize that, uh, you know, sometimes we got to say no. And have to create, say no. mm -hmm. yeah, and create that boundary and do that. And what's not right? I mean, I've changed a lot of friends over the last couple of years, and I just it just weren't serving me. And I realized, you know, I had to basically kind of like you said, kind of cut that cord and get into my power. And they were like, "Yeah, I don't think I want to be friends with you anymore." And I think, hey, perfect, works yeah. out well for me. That, and that's very true. A lot of friendships, relationships are melting away now. And, you know, we really have a choice, Michael, to either step away from them silently. You might not have to say a word or you might have to say something, you know, thank you. And you step away. And, and it is because we're all ascending right now. Um, those of us that are choosing to do the work and really ascend. Now, you know, we're, we might be here and it doesn't mean we're better or worse. There's no good or bad. And another person that was our friend is here. And if we're in a relationship or a friendship and we're going up and they're not really changing, vibrationally, we lose alignment there. Yeah. So yeah, does that make sense? Oh, it makes 100% sense. Uh, you know, that's exactly it. You just you just, there's nothing in common anymore. You're hard to relate to them. The things that you used to relate to them or just don't. And you, and you just kind of see the small stuff that you kind of put your blinders on to and you realize that wasn't healthy for you. Mm -hmm. And you start going, hmm, yeah, I don't think I want this. 
That's it. And we get better at doing it. So, you know, we might have had a friendship that we kept for a year. And then we realize a year later, ooh, this doesn't serve me anymore. Then as we're meditating more and our intuition gets better and we're more aware of what's good for us, now this another toxic person might come in and now we might release them six months instead of a year. Then we get better and better, then it's down to three months, then it's down to a day where we meet the person and say, nice person, but not, not for me. Yeah, exactly. All right. So we touched on the third one. Let's go to the fourth. Okay, let's go to the heart chakra. Yes, the place of unconditional love. This is a place of unconditional love, not just for other people, but more importantly, uh, Michael, for ourselves. I do a lot of work around forgiveness for ourselves with Ho'oponopono. And Ho'oponopono, it was developed by Simeona Akuna in Hawaii. And it, of course, consists of four words. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Okay. So I want you to repeat that because that is so profound. It's so, I'm, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Oh, I'm writing and this down because I'm going to, that is so profound. Wow. So I generally have people look in the mirror doing that work so that they really have the eye contact. You place your left hand on your heart and you really feel into this space. I've had some clients actually cry. I was just going to say, they must just weep or just have one of those ugly cries. Yeah. yeah, it's and it's so oh, that yeah, is really it's, profound. It's very deep work because many times we don't forgive ourselves. We beat ourselves up over things. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was the worst one. Yeah, boom, boom, boom. We use ourselves as a punching bag. And so again, forgiveness work and unconditional love from the heart chakra is for others and for ourselves. Um, and self-love in the heart chakra is so important. You know, so many of us are givers, but we forget to receive. So two things in working with clients is two things that they have the most difficulty with is forgiveness work of themselves and others and um, receiving, receiving in the heart, receiving yeah, I, I, what I you just, deserve. Yeah, mm. I just got a little ping in my heart. I was like going, <gasps> Oh, that makes sense to me. And I can just feel everything's kind of shifting already. So, uh, wow. I, okay. I love that. All right. So we're on the fourth. Where do we go from there? So then we go to the throat chakra. Um, it's blue. And um, this is where we speak our truth. This is where we have our voice. This is where we're able to tell people who we are and what we want and, and really standing in that with confidence. And so many of us might have been shut down by our parents or by a loved one who might have been, you know, maybe not so nice to us. And we lost that ability to speak our truth. Now, when we open it, now we, with compassion and love, we're able to speak our truth and say, you're not going to talk to me like that anymore because I'm not deserving of it. Yeah. Now, one of the things um, I hear this a lot, and when people speak, I'm speaking my truth. Now, what's the difference between my own personal truth and the ego versus the universal truth? Well, and, I, and you think, you, you know, we all have to sort that out because we know ego is going to make us believe, oh, you're going to make a million dollars and you're going to meet Oprah or whatever, right? Um, or the ego is going to say to me, you need to go back to the W-2 because you're never going to make it in your own practice because I walked away from the corporate world nine months ago. So the ego is going to be very clever in telling us things in our head um, to try to get us off the path. So this is, again, why meditation, when we get into meditation and we meet with our higher self and we get the deeper connection in the heart, the heart guides us. The heart will not steer us wrong. It will guide us in our truth. And that's where our truth is. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad you clarified that because, you know, I hear that a lot where people say I'm speaking my truth, but sometimes it's not really a place from the heart. Cause I always say the heart and the throat are connected. Mm -hmm. And when you speak from the heart, the heart is your guidance. That's that universal unconditional love. 
But if it's not coming from that, if you're just speaking what I call quote unquote, your truth, it's not necessarily the highest truth that you could be speaking. So remember yeah. the heart chakra is the integrating point for all of the other six chakras. Yeah. That's it's that halfway point. It's, it's right. that it connects everything. That's yeah. where it all comes from. Because remember, I, I always say this on my posts on Facebook, love is the solution. And when we can come from a place of compassion and love, and we radiate that out into the world, it's what we're going to receive back. That should be like the new bumper sticker for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Especially when you're going to traffic. I mean, I live in a crazy city, so there's traffic every to everywhere. That would be a fantastic, but you have them billboards everywhere. <laughs> Maybe you should send some of that to my, to my government too, as well. They're crazy. That's right. Yeah. All right. So we go from the throat. Where's the next one? And the third eye indigo this is where okay. wisdom intuition are so um you know again this is going to guide you and connect you to the higher realm and your wisdom um with with creator i mean source does that too with your your crown chakra but this this is where your wisdom is okay now wisdom and then after that now one of the things i there's so many um, i wouldn't say it's confusing but there's so many uh so-called esoteric teachings and stuff like that, where they say that this center is more the seventh center and the sixth center is more on the back. And there's always kind of that flip-flop and depending on which, you know, where you study or what you study, sometimes they kind of balance back and forth between the two. Like this could be the seventh, the sixth could be up here. And then the seventh here, the sixth is here. What do you find with that? Do you? So, yeah, I don't overthink it. <laughs> So, I mean, and they say there's more than seven chakras and there's more above us. Um, so I don't overthink it, but you know, um, I, I just go by, I go by the seven chakras and clearing, clearing them out and, and stick with those because they're kind of on that central. Um, if you go to any chart, those are the ones that they're usually um, talking about, not to discount the other ones, but those are the ones right now that I focus on. Yeah, I, I tend to agree on that. I mean, I, I always find it fascinating that we're developing and we're connecting with different more chakras and all that stuff. But I remember, uh, I forget, I heard this quote. It says, most times we can't figure out our own seven chakras. How in the hell are we going to figure out another 12? Because mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. don't use them all seven anyways. We're usually one or two. We're always stuck in you know the first, first three centers for the most part. We never evolve the other centers. So how would you, you know, why bother worrying about the other 12, 24 or 58, wherever we're going to get to. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. No, I think it's just nice to keep it simple and keep it focused on the seven, um, which are most commonly used in the metaphysical world and, uh, and have people work on those. And then we know where the blockages are going to be when people are, you know, um, a lot of times physically, you're going to have back problems show up when your bottom three are you're having problems with your bottom three, like your sacral, that's a real good one for back problems, you know. Um, so they're going to show up energetically in different ways in your in your body. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, and I, like the, I always say the issues are in your tissues. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. totally. I love that. Yeah, it's just, it's just so amazing. The body is your canary. It never lies. If you know what's if something's going on, and you mm -hmm. got aches and pains and things like that, just kind of check in, and you can kind of see what's happening. Absolutely. What's what's going on? Yeah, that's so fascinating. So we went from the sixth, the seventh. So the seventh, we got the final one. So let's it's talk the about crown, the seventh chakra, violet, white. You know, a lot of people say violet, and that's our connection to our creator, to our higher source. So, um, you know, um, that's where we connect at that deeper level when we open that up. So now, you know, you unblock them. I unblock all the chakras. We're, we're clear. Now our body, we've got a beautiful, beautiful white light around the body. The auric system's clear. The chakras are clear. Now you can get into the deeper connection with yourself and with your guides, with your higher self, with creator, whoever your higher power is. So that's, that's how all of it opens up into this other realm. Now we go from the 3D body to another dimension, uh, moving into that other dimension. And people are like, don't always trust it. Like they'll get a message from their higher self. And they're like, did I really hear that? 
And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you heard that, right? It's just like as psychics, you know, when I was just doing this work and I would get information, I, I didn't always trust it. Then as I was doing more and more readings now, it's just second nature. I always trust what I'm getting. Yeah. And that's the one thing I found out over the years is just trust what you get. And it's developing that trust because it's your intuitive wisdom and building that relationship instead of getting it from somewhere else, you're always getting it from in. You can always check in because it's never going to lie to you. Mm -hmm. It's always going to tell you exactly what you need, where to go, what to do. All, it's got your best interest in mind all the time. So you never have to worry about, is it somebody tell me the truth? You just connect and learning to connect. Now, do you spend a lot of time with your clients on teaching them to develop that too, that, that intuition and connecting with them as well? Yeah, I mean, um, so many people come to me and most of them are empaths and, you know, um, everybody has psychic ability. Yeah, it's just a matter of tapping into it. Right. So um, and, and as you meditate more, you're just going to connect more with those gifts. Now, some people will develop them and some don't. This is why I do psychic and mediumship practice groups, development groups um, here that have been very well received and inviting people in are like, well, I, I think I might have something, but I'm not sure. So I always invite people in, even if you don't have any experience, come and practice and let's see what happens. And so energetically, we get these people in the same room. So already you've got the vibration going up just with having people and now Oh, they're like they i might give them a first oracle card to do a reading and they don't get anything and then all of a sudden they get more cards as they're reading other people in the group and it's like snap 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 they're like oh my goodness i'm i'm tapping in yeah it's i remember my first development class and i just had actually my first teacher on the podcast and we talked about that and it's amazing when you start getting that and it's just so clear and I uh, had another friend of mine too, as well. We talked about our, our first channeling experience. And I remember having that experience and it was so crystal clear. It was like somebody speaking in my head. It was the most bizarre, funny, scary, weird experience I've ever had. It was like somebody in my head, like literally talking. It's like they took the microphone, plugged it in my head and they were yapping away. And yeah. I thought, wow, yeah. this is what it's all about. I'm in, I'm hooked. I'm in. Yeah. Yeah, and you get, you know, that's developing the clairs, the clairsentience, the claircognizance, the clairvoyance, you know, so people might even get the smells, the hearing. So yeah, everything in your clairs and some of your clairs will be more developed than others. And that's okay. I'll see things when I'm doing mediumship, they'll show me something like a skateboard or a surfboard or something in relation to that person. And then I'm able to tap into the person who's crossed over. Yeah. And it's, it's so, so profound. And that's one thing I love about mediumship too, as well. The, the ability to help people connect and heal from those wounds uh, of loved ones. It's so, it never ceases to amaze me when you get that information and how clear it is. And just the, the look on the individual's face that you're reading for. And that just that, it's almost like that release. Yeah. And they can just kind of just let that go and know that they're okay. And yeah, it's, always so profound. Now, one of the things I, I saw on your uh, website is that you like to go hiking. Oh, yes. I've, um, in, uh, in 2013, when I began this journey, um, I, I was an, I've always been an avid hiker. And I said to myself, well, I'm not going to stop now. So I continue to hike all over the country and in Canada by myself uh, in bear country. Some people thought I was crazy. And um, I would go in, do day hikes, come back to my cabin or what at night and clean up and then go out again the next day. So I've hiked uh, oh, hundreds and hundreds of miles all over the Rocky Mountains, uh, Banff, Canada, Glacier National Park. Uh, now that I'm on the East Coast, uh, I've gone up to North Carolina a couple of times, Smoky Mountains, um, Blue Ridge Mountains. So this is a place where I recharge and um, where I get more clarity. And uh, I just love being out in the woods. It's grounding. Yeah. Um, so a lot of times, again, I recommend to clients connect with nature in some shape or form. It doesn't mean you have to hike, you know, 50 miles. It might just be going out in your backyard and earthing and putting your feet in the ground and just allowing yourself to connect with the sounds of nature. Yeah, that's one of the things I highly recommend is always nature therapy. It's amazing how cleansing it can be. And especially now that a lot of us have been enclosed, 
you know, uh, in, the, in these houses and apartments and things like that due to the crazy sickness that was going on. And, and, but nature therapy, it's so cleansing. It's just, once you get more in, t- in tune with nature, um, and that's one of the things I know, again, it's, it's almost like, okay, Mike, you haven't been in nature a lot. And I'm, I mean, for me, I love to be like really immersed. Like there's no people, no nothing in the woods, deep in there. And I'm a totally different person. I come out and I just absolutely love it. And I know the healing power of nature and it's, it's so profound. And then when I found out you were a hiker and you're like, oh, you hiked over it. And especially now that you were in bear country. Please yeah. tell me you brought bear spray with you. Uh, you know, I, I, I figure if I get that close to a bear, am I really going to spray them? Um, no. So, you know, I just sing a lot when I go in the woods because that deters them the most is the voice. And I know I'm protected. Um, so I don't worry about it. I just, I don't put that fear out there. I just go out and do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have to commend you on that. Uh, I'm an outdoorsman myself. So I've been in bear country and uh, I even get freaked out with a rifle in my hand because yeah, <laughs> I, I, I've had, I've seen a lot of crazy stories, I mean, like especially in grizzly country that, yeah, that is something you see on a pathway that will, that will change you in a minute there, just seeing a big old grizzly walk up upon you. So, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, I just love nature therapy and how important it is. Now you're basically in Florida, right? That's correct. I am in, I'm in Florida now. Yes. Yeah. Now you're originally in Arizona, weren't you? So I, w- I lived in Arizona for 14 years. That's where I did a lot of my own healing work and transformation. Um, I'm from Boston, Massachusetts originally, and kind of went and moved north to New Hampshire. I was in Maine 15 years, then in Arizona. And now I've been in Gulfport, Florida now for a year and a half. Yeah. Florida's, Florida's a great state. I was like, ugh, I wish I could be in Florida right now. <laughs> be honest with you. It's, it, well, we're recording this podcast. You know, it's a pre-recorded podcast for those who are listening. So um, it's uh, still winter time. But yeah. Uh, yeah, being in Florida right now would just be like, oh my gosh. It is nice. It's really nice. Yeah, that's that's amazing. So, Lisa, if people were looking for your services and they wanted to get a hold of you and they wanted to either have a yeah, meditation, oh, let's let you know what. Hold on for a second. I, what, I forgot to ask you about your drumming. Oh, yes, yes, the sound drumming. So that's, yes. yeah, that's, that's an important component of it, too. So uh, when I was in Arizona, spirits uh, showed me a website and said, I want you to make a drum. I'm like, okay. So in Casa Grande, Arizona, I found a shaman and his medicine woman wife, and we, uh, we made my beautiful skin drum out of elk skin. And um, everything that I'm doing um, was, has been guided by spirit. Um, so I started using the drum as a healing tool and found that it just really relaxes people. I have done it over the internet. I've done it over the phone. I'm um, in person, of course, is a really great experience because you're right next to it. And generally if people are here and I'm doing it in person, I'll drum over them for about 15 minutes to really get them to release. Now, some people go into a past life with this, or they'll start crying because it really releases everything in that they're holding in their body. So it's a, it's a lovely, lo- and I get a lot of downloads as I'm, I'm drumming for people. Okay. Yeah. Cause I, I was so curious about that. I was like, oh, I can't believe I forgot to ask you that. I just got to kind of get the whole kind of outdoorsy thing and my brain just went one way, but then I was realizing the, the drumming was so important because I know it's, uh, you know, from a ceremonial and a healing aspect, you know, shamans do that a lot. And I have a friend of mine who's practicing, uh, becoming a shaman. And she basically does the drumming a lot. And she says the same thing. There's just really, she's kind of hard to just describe or how it actually happens, but there's this effect on people. And I don't know if it's some primordial thing that kind of triggers something in the body to release these either emotions or these past lives, or it maybe puts you into a trance mode where you, you're you basically, you leave your body too as well. She's had clients say that, they popped out of the body, had an outer body experience. Mm -hmm. And they're looking down at themselves and they're wondering, who's this crazy woman drumming over me? Yeah. (laughs) We know how powerful sound therapy is, be it with the drum, be it with um, the crystal bowls and such. It's in gongs. There's so much power in it. And it's funny, I, I had thought about buying 
crystal bowls and other things, but it just doesn't make sense for me. It does not where I'm guided. The drum, the drum has always been great because I love to drum every morning and I love drumming for clients. It truly is so therapeutic um, and amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It is really, it, it's, it's something to really think is um, I don't know if anybody who's listening has ever been to um, a powwow or stuff like that. You know, we have them, you know, uh, once in a while we'll see them in the city here and stuff like that in the drumming thing with the, uh, the indigenous people here in, in our country, in Canada, it is so profound and you just get mesmerized by that same drumming, that same consistent beat that they do. And it's just, it, I don't know for myself, I just find it so uh, it just draws you in. It just, and you just kind of go, I find myself kind of going into a little bit of trance. You just kind of feel, and you can actually feel it. It's kind of like the same, how they talked about when, you know, when a baby hears the heartbeat of the mother, it's that same kind of beating. And maybe it's that whole beating thing that reminds us of our heart and it exactly. gets us into that heart space. Yeah, I think it gets you into the heart space. And I think, again, it's, it's part of releasing the stress and the anxiety that most of us hold. So it, it just really, and especially when you go over the different parts of the body, um, it is amazing how healing it is. Yeah. Now you do this over, over zoom too, as well. And it's just as effective as I have I've done it over a phone. I did it for a client in North Carolina and she didn't want to zoom because she didn't want me to see her. And I literally had my phone sitting on my sofa and I was drumming for her and she really got an effect. And in fact, she just um, sent me a picture. She just built her own drum and that was just lovely. To no see. way. Yeah, she did. So it can, be done. Um, I offer, you know, on my website, it says, you know, meditation, the healing guided meditation is with or without the drum. So I give people the option um, of, of what they want to experience. Yeah. And I think that's important too, as well, just having the availability to you to make, make those decisions, stuff like that. Because a lot of people, when they're first getting into it, it's the easiest thing as far as your journey to go, I believe, is just to just start meditating. If the one thing I always recommend for a lot of my own clients is, and again, it's usually spirit driven, is just to start meditating. Just start with that. A lot of my people who I admire, you know, are talked about med uh, meditation. You know, the people I followed in the past, my, I like to call them my OGs of the spirituality. They always talked about meditation. I really find it, it is so profound. And, uh, and I just have to say, you know, thanks for being on the show today. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you for having me. I, uh, I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's been absolutely lovely. Your your voice is like a warm hug. <laughs> That's what I'm told. That's what people tell me. So, you know, um, I'm I'm starting to put more meditations, real short ones up on on YouTube um, and starting to use that format a little bit more. So, yeah. Okay. So that being said, Lisa, if people are looking for your services, I know I talked about this earlier and until I got off on a tangent, but if people are looking for your services and, uh, where can they find you on the World Wide web? So, uh, www.take5, the number five meditations.com. And I simply have people uh, call me I like to have a discussion with people because first of all, I want them to hear my voice and connect with me. I want to make sure I'm the right teacher for them and it feels good and it resonates. So, um, and they usually tell me a little bit about what's going on and um, then we book the appointment from there. Oh, that's beautiful. Now, what about your YouTube page? My YouTube page is um, Take Five Meditations. Uh, I think I have it as Energy Healer and Psychic. So it's uh, pretty straightforward to find. I have it on uh, Linktree. Um, I have all of my um, all of my social media. Okay, so the social media is the same thing. Take Five Meditations. Uh, it's Instagram, Facebook. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's all the stuff, but just to let everybody know, I'll have Lisa's information on the, in the description below. So if you're watching the YouTube video, I'll have it in the description. So just scroll down just a little bit. I know just use your, <laughs> use your mouse, just scroll down. Now, if you're listening to this audio podcast on Spotify, Apple, uh, Bleaker, Google, and all everybody else there and anchor FM again, it's in the description. So just go uh, through the description when you click on to the, um, onto the episode to just have the description of what's going on and what we're talking about. And you'll find Lisa's information. I'll have all that down there for you. So you can start meditating, start on your healing journey, have some fun and uh, yeah, just in really enjoy your process. Now I can definitely see you're going to be 
you're going to be so busy the next couple of years anyways, just for, from just your voice itself. It is literally like a warm hug. Oh, thank Well, thank you. Um, it's definitely an advantage when you're doing meditation work with people. Now it's just kind of un people, getting people to understand how profound meditation is that, oh, how can I change? But you can, because when you create that space of silence for yourself every single day, there, there's no way you're not going to change in your life because you're going to get so much more clarity and so much more peace. And when you can create a more centered experience for yourself and a more presence for yourself. You, this, this is where all of the change and growth occurs. Yeah, it certainly does. And that being said, Lisa, I'm just going to close out the podcast. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Well, everybody, this has been the Metaphysical Mentor Podcast with Michael Philpott. Thank you so much for joining me and goodbye for now.